I'd like to begin with just a few housekeeping rules. The presentation slides are available. Um, please also do feel free to ask questions via the question box. Um, my name is Mark Cottrell. I am the Global Frackman Technical Director for WSP. I'm based in the UK. Uh, the webinar today is on behalf of our team in the WSP Frackman and Geoscience Modeling Business. Um, the content today is drawing on experience from our own consulting projects and our commercial software users from around the globe. The objective of today's webinar is to present a technical presentation of WSP's tool Fragman in respect of discrete fracture network modeling and simulating fluid flow in fractured rock. This slide provides a high level overview of today's webinar content. We're going to present an integrated methodology and workflow for the characterization and analysis of fluid flow in naturally fractured rocks. The presentation itself is divided into four sections. Firstly, we have an overarching description of the approach, um, the input to the DFN method, as well as outlining some of the data and characterization requirements. Secondly, we're going to consider the updating of the static geometrical DFN model with the inclusion of hydraulics from well testing sources. Thirdly, we're going to cover how we can upscale our DFN model and use it in an alternative continuum description. And the final section, just provides a few demonstration cases on how the DFN approach can be carried forward to perform an insightful fluid flow analysis. Frackman provides us with a fully cross-discipline and cross-industry skill set and capability. What we're presenting today can be used across all of the traditional industries and sectors. This includes infrastructure, mining, nuclear waste, and energy. Um, the examples that we're going to show today are very much centered on the, you know, the use of well test data, so primarily from the energy industry and the renewables industry. The multi sector approach yields, yields several benefits, including adaptability, cross fertilization of skills, uh, cross methodologies, and it also embraces differentiation in comparison to other, other tools. This slide just provides an overview of the Frackman DFN software that we have available. Um, the workflows are bespoke to each of the hydro, nuclear, geotechnical, and energy or reservoir focused industries. Frackman is the most mature tool. It's widely used as a DFN code, and it's been commercially available since 1987. So here I'm going to begin with the overarching DFN approach. Why do we need DFN analysis and modeling? If we consider that developments in fractured rock are becoming ever more challenging and the steps that we need to safely and efficiently work in these environments is not easy. The assumptions that we make about the fractured geometry and their influence on, on the system behavior are often highly conservative or highly simplified. But with Frackman, we can better describe the rock mass through advances in both surface data acquisition, but also underground mapping, borehole data, and also well testing. The DFN approach provides an ideal basis for using these data. Frackman is the leading tool for tackling these types of issues. The previous slide introduced to us what some of the primary DFN requirements are. This slide provides us an introduction to what the, the key input data are. It provides us 
additional detail on exactly what is required to build our DFN model. So what goes into it? In the DFN methodology, we explicitly represent discrete fractures in 3D space. Like pieces of card, we're defining orientation, size, intensity, and mechanical and hydraulic properties for every one of the individual fractures. The picture on the right here provides us an outline generic workflow. It gives us the parameters that we must specify. We must specify the orientation of the fractures. We must specify the intensity of the fractures. So how many fractures in each volume of rock, how big of the fractures, and also KH, the flow capacity of the fractures, meaning we must describe the permeability and the storage. These types of descriptions allow us to address several other important aspects. Firstly, it permits us to generate geologically realistic models based on parameters derived from realistic field data. Secondly, it is stochastic, so it therefore permits us to produce multiple models allowing probabilistic based, and based assessments. This slide provides a logical process for assembling a simple static or geometrical DFN model. From borehole intersection data, like we show in the picture on the left here, we can develop conceptual descriptions of the key fractured geometrical data. Fracture orientation, fracture intensity, these culminate in a static or geometrical DFN model, like we show here in, in the lower right of the slide. This slide now leads us into how do we specify the hydraulic elements? on our DFN models. At the end of the previous section, we summarized how we can build simple static geometrical DFN models. Why do we need to consider flow on the DFN? And how do we consider flow on the DFN? This slide provides us a block of rock and we've taken a slice through it. So we can see exactly what the what the image log, oops, we can see exactly what the image log sees on the borehole. So we can see the fracture intensity along the web. We also see from flow test type data, we can see where the, where the major inflows occur into the borehole. It is evident that these inflows do not necessarily concur in location where we see the greatest number of fractures. So this lack of coincidence between, with high fracture intensity and high flow is not unusual. By building the DFN model, we can help understand these situations such that we can begin to target fractures that hydraulically contribute to the system. In this slide, we introduce the requirements for defining fracture flow. So we've identified KH as, as a flow capacity. So just as the fracture geometry can be largely derived from image logs and outcrops, the fracture hydraulics can be derived from well tests and interference observations. Fracture permeability, compressibility, and aperture can therefore be calibrated directly from well test analysis primarily, but also the analysis of mud loss data. The stochastic nature of the DFN approach means that the uncertainty of these properties can also be addressed. If we consider the left-hand side of this slide, model validation, we can see simulation of observed geometrical data, proof of interwell static connectivity constitutes static model validation. 
for dynamic model validation, we are looking to directly simulate the well tests that we perform in the field. We're looking to reproduce solutions for pressure, the pressure derivative, and the PI curves. This allows us to conceptually develop models, and it also allows us to prove these models against observations. These improved methodologies allow us to characterize the reservoir hydraulic properties, so both the permeability and also the storage. This in turn rapidly improves the DFN upscaling process, where we may feed into other flow simulation tools. The right hand side, the right hand side shows us a pressure derivative curve, and it's the green portion of this curve that we're really interested in. So the mid-time events. So this is where we're really seeing the reservoir response. So as well as the drawdown, so the pressure or head drop, we're looking at matching the derivative curves. The derivative allows us to calibrate and indeed verify that we have the correct fracture geometry and connectivity. We're getting the correct flow response and the, the flow geometry. We're also able to test with interaction, test interaction with discrete boundaries, so perhaps fault structures. If we carry the derivative requirement one step further, um, the derivative curve allows us to identify the different flow geometries by virtue of the gradient of the curve. We see here the basic types of response for the derivative. We have a half slope, a zero slope, a negative half slope that indicates specific things in terms of the fracture network flow. The well test solution indicates a general geometric form that can appear in either fracture networks or porous media, but this allows us to tune our DFN flow model to the observations that we see in our well tests. Other things that must also be considered are rate normalization. Rate normalization allows us to group sets of tests together. So if we have 20 boreholes, we do not need to do 20 analyses. We can calibrate our models on a select few of those 20. So by rate normalization, we can start looking for similar types of behavior across different wells. The dials to turn, we, the dials to turn that we have are permeability and transmissivity, and then also the storage. So we have two dials that allow us to not only shift or translate the curves up and down to match the observed data, but also a curve that can, a, a dial that we can use to tune the hump that we see in these derivatives. This next slide, this next section talks about the conversion of the DFN description to the, the continuum or EPM description. The DFN description provides us a lot of realism, but we also need to be practical. DFN approaches provide a much better geological reality compared to continuum approaches. It better honors connectivity compared to the continuum description, and it allows for inclusion of important characteristics, such as fractures, embedding, but also intersections, and importantly, connectivity. However, there is a significant drawback in that the geometrical complexity doesn't always lend itself to traditional numerical-based flow solvers. Um, so upscaling procedures are frequently used to convert trickier fracture geometry to more convenient grid-based simulators. 
So the upscaling process is there to transform the DFN description to an equivalent grid-based description. So it's about taking these gray colored discrete fractures, so taking the DFN geometry and also the flow properties and actually turning it into an equivalent set of grid cell properties. Some examples that I'm just going to finish up on. Um, so an integrated workflow. So many of the many of the problems that we analyze follow this type of workflow. So we're generating fractures, we're simulating the geomechanics, we're then calibrating the DFN model. So we're matching the hydraulic behavior that we observe on the well tests. We're then upscaling it. And then maybe we're doing some sort of long-term based forecasting. Very simple example we have here. Um, we have a in the upper right picture we have a, a two fracture set DFN model, and we're simulating production um, over a relatively short time period. So you know this is a typical 20 to 25 hour um, production cycle. You can see in the lower right picture the reduction in pressure as we draw down from this fracture system. You can see in the in the lower left curve the type of pressure drawdown that we're seeing, and then in the central chart in the, in the bottom you can see the pressure derivative curve. So you're seeing we're having we're having some combination of radial flow and also a little bit of 3D flow in the system. So the two fracture sets, um, a radial flow geometry is, is dominant. Now, this, this is a discrete description. The next slide shows us, well, we can actually do the same thing by upscaling that DFN description. So by converting the DFN to a continuum grid. So we have an upscaled grid of permeabilities. We have localized mesh resolution around bore, the boreholes or, or the wells. You can see we're getting we we're able to predict near identical drawdown profiles on an equivalent porous media description. We we're also able to get the same type of drawdown, the same type of derivative curves. So this, this gives us good confidence that you know, the effort that we put into the DFN model can be carried through to conventional flow simulators. This next example shows us a uh, a geothermal system, so a coupled process system. So we have the hydraulics, we have the flow in the system. We have both fractures and matrix. We're, we're injecting cooler water into, into the one well, so we're getting a cold water plume around the one well. And then we're extracting water from the system where we're getting the, the, the red plume so we're, we're taking water out. So the FRATMAN DFN workflows allow us to understand complex subsurface flow conditions and temperature. If we carry this forward to some other applications, you can see these types of workflows are routinely found in nu nuclear waste contaminant transport. So the flow of contaminants in deep high stress fractured rock environments so understanding where contaminants and tracers will travel to over time um, we can also include things like tunnels um, so as we have ex underground excavations do the change in stress conditions affect the flow potential of the fractures on the right hand side so enhanced oil recovery, supercritical CO2. So can we inject, can we inject CO2 into the system and, and understand where that CO2 ends up? Can we predict maybe interaction with faults and cap rock? Yes, we can. So the conclusions and, and, and why, why is DFN so good? Well, it allows us to fully leverage 
the characterization data that we have. So both the static data, so the, the, the outcrop data, the borehole image log data, but also the transient data, the well test data. It allows us to develop more reliable subsurface characterizations. Through this, it allows us to reduce conservatism because we increase realism in our analyses. And this in turn allows us to improve the management of uncertainty and also the minimization of risk. Um, with that, I'd like to finish and open the floor to any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, for your presentation. So before moving into the Q&A period, I would like to remind attendees to enter your questions in the question box on the GoToWebinar platform. And also you can download the PDF version of this presentation from the handout box on the dashboard. I will start with the first question. Can Fragment be integrated with ModFlow and FeeFlow? And is Fragment compatible with Python for pre and post processing? Okay. Uh... So yes, um, Fragman is directly directly compatible with Modflow and FeeFlow. So um, the, the 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 workflow the workflow is really quite simple. We build the DFN in Fragman. We then upscale it to 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 a continuum grid, which you can then directly export in, in into either of those two tools. Um, the the key the key benefit of doing it doing the DFN in Fragman is it allows us to capture the connectivity of the DFN. Those things you know, do make a big difference when, when you're actually turning, turn, turning a DFN into a continuum description. Um, the, the, the second part of the question, so uh, Python, um, Fragman does have a, it does have a macro language. So while, whilst it is not Python, you can certainly use Fragman to write. Uh, you can use Python to write Fragman macros. So you can you, you can certainly control the software via a Python language or, or any other programming language. Yes. Thank you. Uh, next question is the in a fractured Dolostone bedrock settings. What are the char characteristics of the fractured network you need to know to model it? Okay, um, great question. Um, the, the 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 key data types. I mean, if if if, if we go back to how we cap, how we classify the data, we basically have static data that is geometrical, and we have hydraulic or transient data. So, in terms of that static data, a a borehole with some image log data or an outcrop even that allows you to statistically characterize the intensity, the orientation, um, the, the shape of the fractures. Um, the, the, the always tricky one is fracture size, um, unless you have an outcrop where you can measure trace lengths or, or you maybe need to, to approach the fracture size definition. That then leads to really just one uncertainty, and that's around fracture aperture. Um, fracture aperture directly impacts the storage or the fracture porosity of the system, but also the fracture permeability of the system. That's where the well testing workflow that we've spoken about today comes in. So well testing data for the hydraulic response is, is essential but the geometrical data you can take from pretty pretty standard these days, um, downhole, you know, downhole geophysics, downhole um, optical televiewer type data. Thank you. Um, there's another question again for FIFLO. Um, are there limitations for the size of uh, DFN model and is it possible to plug fr fragment to FIFLO? Um, Okay, in, in terms of in terms of model model size model size limitation, um, Fragman has been routinely used for nuclear waste repositories. So you may be looking at uh, you know 
40 to 50 square kilometer sites that are you know, maybe six to 800 meters deep. Um, those, those fracture sizes in those models could be maybe down to 250 millimeters. So, so it can actually be quite, quite high resolution. Um, some of the, you know, some of the energy industry models that we're creating with Fracman, we're building DFN models that have, you know, anything between 500 and a billion discrete fractures. So you, you, you can build some very detailed, some very intricate um, DFN models. In terms of the second part of the question, so the, the, the interaction, the inter, inter, interface between Fratman and fee flow and mod flow, it's very much around that upscaled solution. So we, we, we can take our, our calibrated DFN model, we can upscale it, um, we, can, we can export it as a fee flow grid, and then it just plugs right into, into, into fee flow or mod flow. Um, I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Uh, next one is uh, how, e how easy it is to physically tune the well test simulation to observed well test response. It, it, it is quite an easy process. Um, so literally you, 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 tune the, you tune the system for the storage first. So you, you tune it for the fracture porosity. So um, the, the storage aperture ter um, term. Once you've achieved that, it is all about then adjusting the permeability of the relative fracture sets such that you get the right flow geometry and the right drawdown. Um, maybe also the, uh, the right interference between wells if, if you have multiple wells in your system. So it, it is literally two dials to turn. Um, and you know, experience shows that, you know, once you once you set a, a an upper bound case and a lower bound case, it is actually very quick to hone in on on a on a on a, on a good calibration. Thank you. I will take the last question. Apologies, there are more questions coming through. Uh, I hope Mark will be able to answer them uh, shortly by email. The last question is: um, Is the flow simulation capable? Sorry, is the flow simulation capabilities applicable to both fluids and gases or multiphases? Uh, yeah, yes, it is. The, the, the flow engine is a, it's a fully, fully numerical finite volume approach. Um, so we can, you know, we're able to deal with uh, partial saturation by Richard's equation, um, multiphase flow, compressible and incompressible fluids. So, um, you know, de dealing with ideal gas conditions are, are not a problem. Also things around, you know, supercritical CO2. So we're having coupled thermal and hydro behavior. Um, there, there is also work in the pipeline to, to have a fully coupled thermo hydro mechanical approach um, inside Fragment. So, um, you know, the, the, the engine under the hood provides a lot of flexibility and, um, you know, it, it's, it's suitable for a wide range of problem types, you know, where, where we encounter these multi-physics issues. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, for a fantastic presentation. And thank you, everyone, for joining this webinar today. Uh, please feel free to follow up directly with Mark via the contact details shown on the screen. And uh, thanks again, everyone. Have a wonderful day.